you have to care about something outside of yourself, right? Because the mission of Zertu is we are creating a more financially inclusive world by mobilizing and digitizing loans between friends and family. And so the whole premise is everyone needs a financial lifeline from time to time. And so we are empowering users to empower each other through trust-based lending. My name is Dennis Kell. I am the co-founder and CEO of Zertu. This is Code Story, a podcast bringing you interviews with tech visionaries who share in the critical moments of what it takes to change an industry and build and lead a team that has your back. I'm your host, Noah Labhart, and today, how Dennis Kale used his tech and finance knowledge and built the best way to lend money to family and friends. All this and more on Code Story. Born in Monroe, Louisiana, Dennis Kale has been involved in the tech world since he started in the Navy. After serving in the Navy, he obtained a CS degree and an MBA in finance. A family man and father, he realized he was having limited success in getting money returned to him that he lent to friends and family. Ten years later, he set out to solve that problem, to hold people accountable to return lent funds and remove the awkwardness for the lender. This solution became known as Zertu. I came up with the idea almost 10 years ago now. My sister and other family members would borrow money from me on a regular basis, and I had very limited success in getting that money back. So my thought process was that uh, there has to be a way to help make people more accountable, but also take the awkwardness out of the process for me as the lender who wants to help a friend or family member but also wants to, you know, make sure that I get paid back in the process. So that's really where Zertu was born and uh, kind of the brainchild. I actually did the wireframes for it several years ago and just put it away and never got to it until a couple of years ago when uh, my co-founder, Michael, and I decided to team up and uh, start this fintech company that we know today is Zertu. Tell me about the MVP. How long did it take to build and what sort of technology and tools did you use to bring it to life? So we started building this app, started coding in April of 2018. We did a soft launch in the app stores in October 2018 and a hard launch in February of 2019. So just to give you some timeline perspective there. But my background is in JavaScript, so React Native was a natural path to launch the app with. It allowed me to build it once and deploy it twice, if you will. So we decided to go with the uh, React Native framework, which was actually one of those things that uh, turned out to be good for us because we knew we wanted to go live in both Android and Apple, and it actually allowed us to go to market faster as well. What decisions and trade-offs did you have to make in the short term when you're building that MVP? So you chose React Native over Native because that's what you were familiar with. What other sort of decisions did you have to make maybe in the architecture or how to get the product out faster? You know, and how did you cope with those decisions? One of the things you always have to think about is how much functionality do you want or need to build within your app as part of your MVP versus What functionality do you need to sort of integrate with in terms of like different APIs? Are there partners out there you can pull into the mix? Are there workarounds? Are there some process tweaks or enhancements that you can do within the app itself, front end and or back end that could potentially allow you to go to market sooner rather than later? So again, my background is JavaScript. So React Native was a natural path forward for us. And it just so happens that that allowed us to get to market in in both Google Play as well as the Apple Store. And then our back end is essentially Node.js, uh, databases, MongoDB with uh, AWS servers as well. But I think the big thing was making sure that we did not over-engineer this because you're always at the risk of doing that because there's so many different features and functionalities and things that you can add to the app 
but we are very intentional about keeping it simple and to keep it and sticking to the core product. So how did you go about that process of figuring out what was the most important thing to build? You know, what are those core sets of features that you need to launch the product successfully for Zertu? So Zertu is a fintech app that allows friends and family to lend and borrow money with each other. And we automate the repayment process. It's all ACH to ACH. So that's our core business, our core product and core functionality. So as long as we maintain the integrity of that without deviating too much, we felt like we were essentially not getting too far off the rails and that we would be able to hit the timeline that we set out. So we wanted to go live in the app stores in six months. We actually did a soft launch in six months, and then it took us another three months to really work out the tweaks and the bugs and the kinks. We didn't do any marketing initially. People found us in the app stores. They gave us a lot of good feedback. We listened and we made the adjustments and tweaks, and we have a better working product because of that feedback. How have you matured the product through that time frame? It's one thing to have a product and a team that can support that product, but it's another thing to really say we're going to be very intentional, not just about making all these assumptions internally and testing those assumptions, but be intentional about listening to our users with respect to current features and functionality. And also if and when we want to introduce something new, let's ask our current user base, let's ask a potential users, let's get their feedback, let's see what the data tells us, and then let's act on that. One example of that would be, you know, we started as a, a service fee model. So if you got a $500 loan, Searchu would charge 5% service fee. And essentially we would get $25 from that loan. Okay. And so we had multiple people signing up and using the app and we've been growing 60% month over month since we launched. But we also sent out a survey to say, okay, if, you know, do you prefer a 5% service fee or would you prefer a 5% subscription? And almost 80% said subscription. So we made that pivot and we evolved the app and we switched it, changed the functionality there. And now it's still 100% free for lenders, friends and family who loan money. But if and when you need to borrow money, there is a monthly fee of uh, $5. That's a subscription-based model. So how did you go about building your team? How did you go about finding the winning people to join you on this journey to build Zerchu? Teams are probably the most important thing. So, I mean, I have one criteria. Uh, You have to be smarter than me, which is not that hard to do. But but the other criteria is that you have to care about something outside of yourself, right? Because... The mission of Zertu is we are creating a more financially inclusive world by mobilizing and digitizing loans between friends and family. So the whole premise is everyone needs a financial lifeline from time to time. And so we are empowering users to empower each other through trust-based lending. So you have to have a mindset that fits the business model. And you also have to have the intel, the uh, intellect and the business acumen to actually execute as well. So that's how we, we select our team members. And so far, we've been quite successful. That's great to hear. It's it's hard to find the winning horses sometimes. How, how big is the team now? Uh, we're up to six internally and uh, six externally. Excellent. Very cool. Uh, how many engineers are on your team? Uh, we have six engineers, actually. And that includes front-end, back-end, and DevOps. Today's episode is sponsored by Twala. Twala is a fintech company helping clients solve a fundamental business problem. How to best move money. Payments are a key component of every business, yet one that can be difficult to understand. Twala's ACH payment API removes the complexity involved in moving money to and from bank accounts so that businesses can continue to focus on their core revenue streams. ACH transfers are efficient, reliable, and with Dwalla, available for any business. I've partnered with Dwalla for over two years and can vouch for two important aspects of their business. Solid, reliable technology and amazing customer support. Dwalla enabled our team to achieve same-day pay on our platform. And if my team needs anything, we can rely on Dwalla's support team to get an answer quickly. Dwalla is at the forefront of a payments revolution. 
having created a ready-made connection to America's money-moving network and is ready to help your business scale. Start building against Dwalla's API in the sandbox environment today for free. Visit dwalla.com slash code story to get started. This episode of Code Story is sponsored by Tresta. Tresta is a mobile app that lets you do business calling and texting from anywhere. With Tresta, you can set up your business phone number, download the app, and start calling and texting unlimited right away. Tresta is the best business phone app on the market. Whether you're a founder or freelancer starting your business or you're already established, growing your network and your business is all about communication. You've got to be available no matter where you are. Tresta offers the call management features that empower you to communicate smarter and more efficiently, like auto attendance, call recording, user groups, and more. And you don't need any special equipment, just the smartphone you're already using. Tresta is easy to configure, so you can set everything up yourself, all online. It's just $15 per user per month, with no contract. So start your free 30-day trial today at tresta.com slash codestory. That's www.tresta.com slash codestory, all one word. So let's talk about scalability a little bit. So you mentioned, you know, some of the early trade-offs are, are you don't focus as much kind of on the as many features you don't focus on over engineering which is which is a fantastic approach when you're building an mvp when you're building a product is that something that you feel like you're going to have to fight later or is that something you're already fighting as you grow zertu yeah it's something that we already fight today but it's something that i'm i'm very intentional in terms of just sort of making sure that we discern the vital few from the trivial many And by that, I mean, if you put 10 people in a room, you're going to get 100 different ideas on how you could and should be doing something better. So going back to the whole continuous listening and being very proactive about how we sort of execute on something, we listen and we listen for those themes, right? So if enough users ask for and request or recommend that we add a feature, then that naturally rolls up to the top of the list, if you will. So that's typically how we approach this, just to kind of keep the integrity within the process. But I do think that it's it's important to listen actively, but also be very intentional about not over engineering as well. That makes sense. So when you, when you look at, you know, from a scalability standpoint, I know you mentioned, uh, are you, are you guys still using MongoDB? Is that right? Correct. Do you find that puts you in any sort of limitations as far as analysis you can do on any of the data you have on the platform? Or is that kind of not an important factor yet? Uh, It hasn't presented any challenges yet. I'm sure at some point it will be. And then we'll look at re-platforming that. But uh, we've gotten around that through some interesting coding and engineering. We have our own custom dashboard and all that fun stuff. So we're actually able to extract what we need and present it in a way that's usable for us. So you look across this past year of hard launch, what are you most proud of? Probably the fact that we have been able to consistently grow our user base 60% month over month. And also the fact that Zertu has this organic built-in network effect. So the average user on our platform invites two new users to the platform. So we're very proud of that and pretty excited about that because you know that's very different than most models. So if I go take an Uber today, it doesn't mean that Noah and two other people are gonna take an Uber, right? But right. If, I, if I need to borrow money, obviously I need to borrow money from someone. So that person's gonna get an invite from Zertu. So we are excited about that because that actually keeps our customer acquisition costs very low compared to other fintech companies. That's exciting. So anybody really that comes as a lender or a receiver of the funds is a potential lender or receiver of funds, right? That's exactly right. And uh, we do have a few people on the platform who have been on both sides. That's fantastic. How does Zertu move money back and forth, you know, between people in your platform, between your platform and the, and the receivers? Yeah, we have a great partnership with Dwala that we've had since day one. Kind of 
going back to your question of, around the MVP and how do we decide what we're going to build within the app versus what functionality we're going to have outside the app. So very early on in this process, we went through this sort of build versus buy exercise. And uh, we opted that, you know, Dwala is really good at this payment processing stuff. So we should probably have some conversations with them. One thing led to another. And within a few weeks, I think we had a working prototype in the sandbox. And then we started kind of playing with our uh, sort of business model, which is different from other platforms and users that Dwala has. So there are some things that we had to do on our side uh, that Dwala was very flexible and worked with us in terms of their technical team and their functional team. Uh, we created several Chrome jobs to do some very interesting things uh, that they were more than accommodating with. So it's a great relationship and um, we don't see that relationship doing anything but continuing to evolve over time. So it sounds like you were able to get up and running quickly with their solution. They were readily available to help you in your launch and and even you know work with you on any sort of custom type of solution you were deploying. Yeah, because if you think about Search You and what we do, right, we're a payment a facilitation platform. Okay. We're not a a bank, we don't market or sell securities and we don't loan money. Uh, we simply provide the platform for two known entities, two people who know each other to lend and borrow money with each other. And we facilitate those loans and we automate the repayment process. And so by doing that, Dwala is a key piece in that equation by helping us move those funds from one user to another. Let's flip the script a little bit. Tell me about a mistake you made and how your team responded to it. Yeah, uh, man, how many? Uh, we make a lot of mistakes. Uh, none that have been showstoppers by any means, but certainly things that can be disruptive. You know, if this is your first rodeo. But uh, yeah, we had a data issue not too long ago uh, where one of our, where our dev team was working with the DevOps and there was a uh, miscommunication and uh, we had a very brief period of time where we did not have data available to the user on the app, uh, to a small subset of those users. And so, uh, you know, the reaction was go to the backups quickly, you know, and get everything up and running, test it, make sure everyone's good, send out notes proactively to make sure users are good. Have we gotten any emails, et cetera, from a support standpoint? If so, what was the issue? Is that issue resolved? It's really a fire drill, right? But, you know, what I like about my team is that everyone reacts and gets on the same page very, very quickly. And uh, it's only one objective, and that's to solve the problem and make sure we have the best user experience possible. This episode is brought to you by RIMS, the Risk Management Society. RIMS is the preeminent organization dedicated to the profession of risk management. The org brings networking, professional development, and education opportunities to its members of more than 10,000 people across 60 countries. Their main goals are to equip risk professionals to succeed in a changing environment, enhance their engagement within the community, and expand their influence worldwide. The RIMS 2020 Annual Conference and Exhibition is your place for the best in education, networking, and solutions to build stronger, more resilient risk programs. Nowhere else in the world will risk professionals have access to three things. Every major insurer, broker, and the latest solution providers in the space, 180 education sessions that address the biggest risks and challenges facing organizations today, and risk management peers who are not only succeeding despite market conditions, but are ready to share their stories. For nearly 60 years, RIMS has delivered the latest and greatest strategies and resources that allow our attendees to grow, innovate, and succeed in any business. Join them May 3rd through 6th in Denver, Colorado for the ultimate risk management experience. So what does the future look like for your product and for your team? The future is we're going to 
continue to expand our corporate partnerships. I uh, did not mention before, but we did sign a partnership with AT&T several months ago. So now you can actually borrow money through the Zertu app to pay your AT&T wireless bill or cable bill directly through Zertu. We are actually replicating the, that partnership with several large and medium-sized companies, including a lot of publicly traded companies as well. So we're very excited about that. Going back to your question, I think, what are you most proud of? Or I would frame it different. What are you most excited about? I would say it's definitely uh, the expansion of our corporate partnerships that organically drives users to our platform. And we ultimately drive payments to them that they would not have otherwise been able to receive unless that user was able to borrow that money to take care of that debt. That's a really interesting partnership. I I wouldn't have thought of that. So people can borrow money on your platform to pay their bills and then pay that back uh, through your platform. That's amazing. Correct. So that's that's one of the key differentiators that Zertu brings to the to the table. Again, you can use other platforms to send people money. There are plenty of peer to peer applications out there and you can hope and pray you get it back. But there's no formal infrastructure to facilitate and service those loans the way Zertu does. And then you pull in those corporate partnerships. It becomes even a better value proposition from that standpoint, because now as the lender, I know that this money is going toward the intended purpose that I say I need to borrow the money for. And as a company, okay, I know that I have a better chance of getting paid versus having to write this off for 20 cents on the dollar. It's a win-win all around. Well, who influences the way that you work, Dennis? Uh, Name an architect or CTO, CEO, tech person, tech leader, or anyone doesn't have to be in this space that you look up to and tell me why. Oh, man, it's it's pretty a lot of people. (laughs) I think, you know, for me, always look for things that other people bring to the table that are very unique and different about them. You know, so there's no sort of one person that I can really go to because I, I literally find inspiration in just about everyone I come across. And even if that inspiration is, hey, I'm not going to do that. Right. I think that's something as well. You know, there are people that I admire from afar and, you know, close friends that I admire, you know, very close up as well. So I'm constantly feeding off of people and, you know, always fascinated by people and places. And so. So for me, it's very organic to just be constantly listening and sort of uh, hoping to benefit from others' hindsight. So this is part of my day. That's good stuff. If you could go back to the beginning, I'd say even maybe look at this two different ways. If you could go back to the beginning of when you had the idea or the beginning of when you started building Zertu, what would you do differently or how would you consider taking a different approach? That's a good question. I actually thought about this a while back, you know, and I've been asked the question in a different way, uh, you know, because, again, had the idea several years ago, didn't do anything with the idea for several years. You know, think back to it in hindsight, really, had I started this business back in 2010, for example, I don't think the market would would have been there to support this. I don't think the technology that we have today would have allowed me to go to market as fast as we did. There are lots of factors that I think would have uh, probably allowed us to get up and running very quickly, but we would have fizzled out fairly quick as well. But we would have to spend a lot more money to get to market as fast as we did, or we would have had a much longer one way. So I think everything comes down to timing and money. You know, I don't think I would have changed anything about that. I think we made the right decision in terms of choosing a framework that we did with respect to React Native so we can build it once and and deploy it twice into the different uh, uh, app stores. And uh, so I think from that respect, I think we're good. But that said, though, Noah, I mean, we are... We are learning so much every day. So, you know, depending on the day and the hour and the time you ask me that question, it could change. Totally understand that. (laughs) (laughs) You have the right to change your mind tomorrow. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Well, last question, Dennis. Um, You're getting on a plane 
and you're sitting next to someone who is a young builder, you know, just create the, the next big thing. And they just, they're excited. They just want to show it to you. They want to go, you know, share it with the world. What advice do you give that person just starting down this road that you've been down for a while? You know, I, I definitely would, would say you have to believe in yourself and you have to challenge yourself, right? I, I think you can overdo one of those, but you have to have a healthy balance of both. I try to always think in a 360 degree angle, right? So I'm the person, if I have a great idea, I'm the first person to try to talk myself out of that idea. So I'm going to punch holes in it and figure out, you know, what's wrong with it, right? And then solve for that. Because if you wait until, you know, your idea is out there and you put all this effort and energy and resources into it, it may be too late for that. The other thing I would say, because I see people do this a lot, they'll have an idea, but they keep it to themselves because they don't want to share it with anyone because they're afraid someone else is going to go do it. I told as many people who would listen about Zertu, right? I mean, if someone can go to market and out execute me, then have at it, right? But at the end of the day, you know, if it's something that I believe, going back to the point, believe in yourself and challenge yourself, you have to make sure that you're not afraid to put your thoughts out there, put your idea out there, but more importantly, have the ability to execute on those or build a team around you who can execute on those. That's excellent advice. Well, Dennis, thank you for being on the podcast today. Thank you for telling the creation story of Zertu. Sure. Thank you, Noah. Appreciate you having us today and uh, talking about Zertu. It's been fun. And this concludes another chapter of Code Story. Code Story is hosted and produced by Noah Labhart. Season 2 episodes are co-produced and edited by Bradley Denham. Be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or the podcasting app of your choice. Support the show on patreon.com slash code story for just 5 to 10 bucks a month. And when you get a chance, leave us a review. Both things help us out tremendously. And thanks again for listening.